UConn Nation, let's talk Aiden Mahaney. Mahaney Media starts right now. You are Locked On UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A little housekeeping for me, YouTube support, keep it up, amazing. Past the 2,500 mark, we're inching towards maybe 2,600 soon, soon, soon. I'd love to have all my subscribers download the audio version wherever you get your podcasts. It's equally as important for helping the channel and the Locked On UConn audience grow. So if you can do me two quick favors, first, Click that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. Then head over to Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit that follow button. This way you'll never miss a moment of Locked On UConn. I can't tell you how much your support means to me. It's everything. If you're tuning in from your car, once you finish the show, please drop us a five-star review. If you're listening at your desk, at your office, give us a five-star review anyway. Um, Today's episode is sponsored by... Fan duel as the playoffs wind down and the sports stop sporting like we want them to. This summer, Fan duel is hooking up all customers with a booster of bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Aiden Mahaney, the transfer combo tr- card transfer from St. Mary's. His impactful transition to UConn. How is that going to look? He had an incredible career. In just two seasons at St. Mary's, making significant contributions in that in, in in both of those seasons for Randy Bennett's St. Mary's Gales. If you just start to look at, I mean, think about him coming in as a three-star recruit, not a ton of fanfare. He comes in, averages 14 points, 13.9 to you know, so 13.9 points, 2.1 rebounds, and two assists a game as a freshman. Named to the first team all WCC and WCC all freshman team. Showcase his scoring ability with key performances, including 25 points in his debut and 18 points in a crucial win over Gonzaga that season. Then we flash forward to his sophomore year, also freshman year, really kind of showed his ability against UConn in the second round. That's where they got their first view of him, at least up close and personal. His sophomore season maintained that average of 13.9 points. So love the consistency there. There wasn't a drop. There wasn't a, a, a huge explosion forward. But he got an uptick in his rebounds, almost half a rebound extra a game. Same thing with almost a full assist, more a game. So another 2.6, 2.6 assists. Helped lead the team to the WCC regular season and tournament titles. He also scored 23 points in the title game against Gonzaga. Why is that important? Because let's face it, guys. We're talking about a a kid coming from what amounts to a very, very high mid-major basketball league playing the Gonzagas of the world, playing St. Mary's, uh, or playing against San Francisco, Pepperdine, these folks. You're not playing Big East competition, but you you are playing high level at sometimes NCAA tournament level folks, or if not NCAA tournament, right on the cusp, right? So he's got a career where he averages basically 14 points a game, two, two and a half rebounds, two and a half assists. His field goal percentage is right hovering over 40%. Three-point percentage is around 38%. His first year as a freshman, his his three-point percentage was in the 40s, 40%, almost touching 41. That dipped in his sophomore year when they asked him to do a little more. How can this translate? I think he's more Tristan Newton than Cam Spencer. Um, I think his consistent scoring ability, his ability to elevate during pressure moments is really what's going to make him the valuable addition to UConn's roster. His experience and maturity, I mean, he's already played for a team that likes to run sets, although maybe not as intricate, provide that stability to UConn's backcourt with Hassan Diara, solo ball, and also Ahmad Noel. I think he has some really great versatility because he can run the point, but he can also come off the off the ball and do these off-ball scenarios, providing flexibility for pin downs, for flare screens, also the ability to create for other folks. And really, kind of adopt his different uh, his abilities to adopt different in game scenarios. He's had really solid shooting appearance uh, performances against higher level opponents. I mentioned this a long time ago when they were looking into him as a recruiting ex- as as a potential transfer. I would imagine that they asked him why some of his performances dipped against 
the people in conference that he probably should dominate. So I think what you'll see from Aiden this year is an an emphasis on being a, having attention to detail, an emphasis on not playing down to your opponents, an emphasis of maybe not allowing a lesser opponent take advantage and really kind of having that UConn mentality of stepping on their necks and attacking from that perspective. You have to think him coming from St. Mary's and that being a championship program, at least from the WCC perspective, um, he kind of brings that winning mentality, that wanting more, that championship experience, his ability to perform in in critical games, I think is going to be big because UConn lost pretty much their two clutchest performers in terms of the outside ability with uh, Tristan and Cam going pro. So I think he fills a big void there. I think you could fill it with Solo. I think you could fill it with Ahmad Noel. But Aiden just adds a different element to the the aspect of we need someone with experience. We need someone that's cerebral. We also don't don't let Aiden Mahaney fool you. This kid's a, a good athlete. Um, he is going to be prime and ready for to fill that Tristan Newton role. And I, I look at his comps and I look at his field goal percentage, and I would imagine. When we when we put him in the Luke Murray Dan Hurley offense, forty percent from the field is going to turn into forty five to forty eight percent from the field, and his three point percentage is going to go from thirty seven point five to closer to forty two or forty three, and I, I think that's mostly because they have a, a lethal trio. Uh, they if you think about who's who's probably going to start for them, Hassan, Aiden, Alex. Right, Samson Johnson, maybe Liam McNeely. So right off the gates, you have three plus shooters, forty percent three point shooters. Hassan is no slouch from shooting threes, so you can't really key on Aiden. You can't really key on him, and that's going to be a huge mistake that people are going to make. That they're going to think he's kind of a secondary scorer when he's likely more of a primary scorer coming off of a fourteen point game, point per game career right now in two seasons in in college. So his transition to UConn is going to is expected to be seamless and providing the Huskies with a dynamic capable guard of doing multiple different things and having an immediate impact both offensively. And I see him having that cam Spencer effect with active hands and deflections, just that overall mentality. He may not be the in your face, dropping F bombs uh, kid that cam is, which I love, but Aiden's pretty damn close. And, um, you know, I think that that combo between a cam Spencer, Tristan Newton type is exactly what UConn needs going forward. well, we're going to talk about who I think Aiden kind of is his comps are from a from a college recent college basketball history. Uh, I would say going back maybe ten years. There's a few few names that I threw around, and surprisingly, their stats match up in particular with one. So we're going to talk about that coming up after this. I love sports. I love them so much and never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down and we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to, FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app, dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. Official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. So what can we expect um, from Aiden Mahaney? I have high hopes, but I did, did a deep dive into the type of players he's similar to in recent college history. And I, I took some liberties with this. So, you know, if you're listening to this and you go, oh, that's such that's so off base. Just try to remember, I'm, I'm thinking it from freshman, sophomore year. So if you're thinking of in particular, when I named the first person, people are going to go, oh, you're crazy, because I think the guy averaged like 28 points a game his senior year. Just freshman, sophomore year, like what's the next year going to look like? The type of player that he is, and it may not mean he's going to average the same amount of points, but based on Mahaney's skill set and statistics, several college basketball players in recent history could be considered comparable in terms of their performance during their freshman and sophomore years. Here are a few players who I feel are comparable. So the first one is Jimmer Jimmer Fredette. His freshman year, he averaged seven points a game and averaged like 45% from the field, 33% from three. His free throw percentage was like 85%. He didn't play a ton of minutes, um, 
but he made a big jump his sophomore year to about 16 points a game, four rebounds, three assists. And then that's what this is when the whole Jimmer for Dead era started with for BYU 40, 40, almost 50% from the field, just under 40% from three. And he was more of a volume shooter, but had those high expectations, realized them, and obviously kept going. So that's that's one. Number two, um, this one is a little, this is a little bit a, of a take it with a grain of salt because he's an NBA player. So you're going to think of him right off the bat. And he also played at a low mid major who actually made a great uh, upset in, in the uh, NCAA tournament against Duke, CJ McCullough. So CJ averaged high numbers and points 19 points his freshman year, 22 points his sophomore year. And remember, remember the level of play. I don't think I don't think he does that if he plays at Gonzaga. Let's be let's just be honest. I don't think he does that if he plays at at uh, St. Mary's. He averaged about two points and five rebounds. He upped his rebounding average his sophomore year. I think the comps are more rebounding and uh, the comps are more field goal percentage, three point percentage. I think you're going to see an uptick in um, Aiden's three point percentage next year from an efficiency standpoint, the same way CJ did his freshman to to sophomore year. Um, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube and the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Um, back to these comps. Uh, this is another interesting one, and I think this, this may resonate. Is Malachi Flynn, who's a good player for San Diego State. He averaged about just on, just under ten points a game his freshman year, forty percent from the two from overall, thirty eight percent from three, and made a nice jump his sophomore year, fifteen point eight to uh, to now a 42 percent three point shooter. So these are again just comps. I think I think that makes sense. Um, this one is an interesting one. I think again there's too big a jump from his freshman to sophomore year, so we're gonna keep we're gonna skip it. It was, by the way, it was Marcus Howard, but he averaged like 13 points a game his freshman year, so the same as Aiden. But he made a leap to about 20.4 points a game his sophomore year, which is, I think, what if 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 UConn needed it, if UConn needed Aiden to score 20 points a game, he 100% could. And I think you could probably say say the same thing about Alex. I think you could say the same thing about Aiden Mahaney. I think or, or Leah McNeely. But I think what you're I think what you're asking more is pick and choose your spots. The same way that Cam did. Like, how many times I begged before I before I did a did the interview with um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but the gentleman from Fox Sports who did the article on their offense, and um, we talked about uh, you know hot spots and where they're shooting and and how they how they um, how they go about selecting and creating kind of these brain center types like Alex's. To know that when they're on the wing and they're that's that's their spot, they automatically it's like Pavlov's dog. They're they're shooting. But if you notice, like if you notice that Cam was really good at the top of the key, he was really good at the left wing free throw line extended. But he didn't make he didn't he didn't shoot a ton from other spots. Like the the majority of his his shots were in areas where he knew that he was money and that he was almost lights out from everything. So that's what they asked him to do. So he did it and he excelled and that's what made him a more efficient player. Same thing with reposting, like with Donovan Klingon. Could he have taken an eight-foot jump hook? Absolutely. But what he did is he kicked it back out, reposted, got an easier two. So these are the type of things that help you uh, players when they come to UConn. But as far as scoring ability, comparison, insights, um, the player that is uh, eerily similar to Aiden Mahaney is a player that you guys may or may not have known from Iowa, Jordan Bohannon. Um, if you look at their games played, their comps from a field goal percentage, um, they are almost identical freshman and sophomore year. Um, and the only thing I would say is Aiden had a better start to his career and it stayed consistent. Whereas is, as, as, um, Jordan averaged the same amount of points, his sophomore year that Aiden averaged for both. Right. So right around 13, 14 points a game, but as far as like minutes played, field goal percentage, three point percentage, although Jordan was a better three point shooter, I think this is the. I think if we're being super conservative about what Aiden Mahaney is going to be, Jordan Bohannon is a great comp because he's a little bit shorter guard, but he plays with a similar mindset. Uh, is not going to force it too much unless you're asked to play that role, like he was last year at St. Mary's, and some of his efficiency suffered. So. What Dan Hurley likes to do is find players that he can coach and that are willing to do what he wants them to do. 
he, he said so much and on, in a Dan, uh, Dan Patrick interview, right? Why didn't he go to the Lakers? Because there's no control. He can't, he can't control Jordan Clarkson taking a, a wild three point shot because Jordan Clarkson wanted to uh, get a heat check. That's just, that's just not in Dan's DNA right now. And I don't think he can compute that, that level of selfishness. And this is no disrespect to Jordan Clarkson, uh, who's not even on the Lakers anymore, but, Jordan, Jordan kind of came to mind. So um that's just that's just not who who Dan is right now. Dan is a he wants you to take good shots. If you're open, shoot it. If you're not open and one of your uh p- players is open and you don't and, and you shoot it and they and they shoot you that you, you may as well not shoot the rest of the game because it just creates this level of selfishness, and that's just not something that Dan wants. And I don't think Ida Mahaney has any part of that or any bone in his body is selfish when it comes to that. He wouldn't have lasted at St. Mary's. Randy Bennett runs a tight ship in terms of, you know, they run a slow offense. They, they're they really meticulous. So this comp between Jordan and Aiden is, is pretty solid. Both players showed consistency in scoring, about 13.5, 13.9 points a game. Shooting efic- efficiency, Bohannon had a higher free throw percentage, so I'd love to see Aiden get that higher as well. Playmaking, uh, Jordan was a little bit better of, uh, in terms of assists. But again, Mahaney, I don't think, has many as much help at St. Mary's as he will at UConn. I, th- I could see him going from two and a half assists a game to close to five assists a game. Huge jump, but I think that's possible, at least four assists. And I think Mahaney's going to be asked to rebound similar to Cam was, and I think he has no problem sticking his nose in. I think he's going to be a little more physical than people re- give him give him uh, credit for. And either way, Aiden can be similar to these you know, five or six gentlemen or better or worse, but he's going to be consistent. And I think that's what the one word that he is right out of the bait or out of the gates is. So it's only a reasonable conclusion with a better program and better talent and in this laser focus that they're implementing in his mindset that his outputs will be considerably higher. Well, let's take a step back and talk about one of my favorite things. My first ever team or UConn national championship team that I beloved. And recap the game that kind of got us to the promised land, the 1999 Elite Eight game over Gonzaga. Coming up after this. Summer is here, and that means stocking up on everything from sunscreen to snacks. Don't stress about the cost. Use Ibotta. Get cash back on all your purchases. Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn real cash back on every items, everyday items from groceries to beauty supplies. That's a, The average user earns $256 a year right now. Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying the app. Use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE when you register. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store. Download Ibotta for free and start earning cash back today with the code Locked on college. Make every purchase count with Avada. Hey everyone, it's Mark Zanetto from Locked on College, Locked on UConn. With a new baby girl on the way, I'm already preparing for sleepless nights and busy days ahead. That's why I need the convenience of factors: no prep, no stress meals. They allow me to focus on what's important, getting sleep and spending time with my family. Warmer, sunnier days are calling. Fuel up for them with Factors chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals. Whether you're looking to stay calorie smart, increase protein plus, or stick to keto, Factor has you covered. Their fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So no matter how busy your life gets, you'll always have time for nutritious, great-tasting food. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals to this summer with dietitian approved meals you can trust. From breakfast to dessert, stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant-quality meals featuring premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. No shopping, prepping, or cooking, or even cleaning up. Head to factors.com. Factormeals.com slash college 50 and use the code college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code college 50 at factormeals.com slash college 50 for 50, 50% off your first box. Make your life easier and your meals delicious with Factor. All right, we're back on Locked On UConn. Had to pay some bills there, but uh, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm I am 100 
subscribing to factor that is happening. I was going to happen no matter what. And now they're a sponsor. So you better believe it. So a quick blast from the past today. We're talking so much about recruiting and what's going to be coming ahead. Let's, let's take a step back and look what, what happened a long time ago, back when I was just a high school senior, UConn versus Gonzaga in the 1998-99 season. In fact, the date was March 20th, 1999. Final score, UConn 67, Gonzaga 62 at the formerly known America West Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. I believe that's where the Suns used to play. So UConn was a one seed. Gonzaga was a 10 seed. Leading scorers in the game, Rip Hamilton, 21 points. Gonzaga's Richie Fromm had 16 points. Pardon me, I had to burp up my factor meal. Um, the Elite Eight matchup between UConn and Gonzaga was was pretty hotly contested. It was a tight battle, a one versus 10. Jim Calhoun had never been to a Final Four. All those narratives, couldn't win the big game, couldn't get to a Final Four, yada, yada, yada. Uh, they came into this game a heavy favorite up as a 31-2 and two, 31 and two record, number one seed. Gonzaga, under head coach Dan Munson, who would actually leave after this game for Minnesota, was a tournament's Cinderella team making its first ever Elite Eight appearance. So this was kind of like the beginning for Gonzaga. What was the beautiful thing was this was the beginning for both of these teams in different ways. And so in the UConn way, it was the beginning of them starting to dominate and be the the force in college basketball. All the banners you see, the things that are hanging up behind me, those are, those are things that don't happen without this win right here. It was a win over a 10 seed. And I think it, I think when you think about one seeds beating Cinderella's. This is one of those Cinderella's that if they beat UConn in this game, they probably get killed by Duke in the final, but they probably get to the final. This was a good team. It was a scrappy team. And if we look back at that game, it was a, it was a close game. UConn was up 32, 31 at halftime. I remember exactly where I was. It, this is where I usually was my senior year of high school. When I would watch UConn games, I was in my parents basement, insert your jokes here, but it was like a finished basement with like a pool table and all that stuff had carpeting and heating and all that stuff. It wasn't like, you know, uh, the jokes of guy living in his parents' basement. I was a senior in high school guys. So I still live there. Um, so the first, first half was back and forth. Neither team was really able to pull away. Gonzaga's Richie from, and remember this name, Casey Calvary providing some early scoring with UConn's Richard Hamilton and Khalid me and kept UConn pretty close. The Bulldogs' scrappy play and effective zone defense posted the challenges that UConn was having issues with. You know, I think I think really the 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 pressure to get Jim Calhoun and the Huskies to their first Final Four was the biggest factor. You can, can't take anything away from Gonzaga, but it's really what was the issue at the start, and really Husky, UConn's athleticism and depth really allowed them to maintain a slight edge at the half, but kind of push that into the second half. So. Strong start for Gonzaga, really. They came out aggressive, but I think that's all how all upsets start to happen. But as the game went on, the longer you hang around as the as the as the remaining team, as long as you have the leadership, I think Elamine, I think you could put Richard Hamilton in this mix, uh, Jake Boskel, uh, Ricky Moore, friend of the program. Those guys were instrumental in not allowing UConn to succumb to what would have been an, a, a monumental upset. So I think their defense is really was was kind of what they could hang their hat on if there wasn't wasn't a great shooting performance. And let's be honest, scoring sixty seven points, not exactly you know shooting the lights out. So the second half really mirrored the first with both teams battling uh, back and forth. Um, you know, the, in the final minutes, UConn's defense clamped down. Gonzaga struggled to find open looks. Uh, Elamine had some key free throws in the closing moments, as almost like a foreshadowing event uh for later on when they would ultimately go on to win a national championship that year but i think the story of this was again the when you look back at this both of these programs started before this both of these programs had successes before this but this was a seminal moment i think for both of these programs which is it ushered in the mark few era for dan monson leaving and it ushered in an era of Husky titles that started to snowball after the 99, 898-99 season. 2004, 2011, 2014, and then our back-to-back -back titles most recently. So Gonzaga's no slouch. They, they haven't won a national championship, but they have been consistent on the national stage. And I think, again, this, this game in particular was kind of like the seminal moment for both of these teams in beginning something that 
kind of defines who they are. Um, I think Gonzaga is still looking to break through that championship banner, so to speak. Um, you know, I think they finally got to some final fours, so they've, they've been to two. So I think that helps them in the future. They won't feel that same angst that UConn did in this game. But ultimately, um, their, their remarkable end ended and it earned them some national respect. And ultimately, this was the catapult to UConn going to their first Final Four beating Scooney Penn and Ohio State. And then a Coach K-led Duke team that was stacked with first-round picks. La- little, 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 real quick analysis, the, uh, the, the, the um, statistics from this game. Some names you'll love. Hamilton had 21 and 21 points and six rebounds. So shout out to Richard Hamilton. My boy Khalid El Amin, 13 points and seven assists. The indomitable and, and just jacked Kevin Freeman, 11 points and 10 rebounds, a double double machine. The golden, golden haired, just absolute, you know, backstreet boy in sync lookalike, Jake Boskell, 10 points and five rebounds. He would have been pretty funny, uh, backstreet boy being that big, but, um, I just remember that that uh, Zach Morris style hair, so cracks me up every time. But uh, I love Jake; uh, was was a big fan of his. And then Gonzaga, Richie Fromm, Matt uh, Matt Santangelo. That was a great name coming out. Had eight points and seven assists. Casey Cal- Calvary, twelve points and five rebounds. Richie Fromm had sixteen points. And ultimately, again, this was such a uh, a big thing for both of these teams. UConn ended up winning their their first national championship and set that up. I just I, I'm going to start doing more of this in the offseason, really just recapping some of my favorite games in, in UConn history. And this is one of them. It was it's it's something that I felt super proud of this team and uh was 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 overjoyed watching them get to a final four and, and seeing Jim Calhoun cut down the nets for the first time. So this has been another episode of Locked on UConn. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto, asking you to stay locked in, stay connected, make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies.